And joining us now is the Democratic nominee, Adrian Fontes. Thank you very much. And I want to start by congratulating you on your victory. Thank you very and, much. Um, and, and want to kind of go on from, and move on from there. And let's start a little bit about what you want to accomplish if you're elected. You do have a bit of an ambitious agenda. You want statewide ballot tracking. You want voting centers um, uh, across the state, numerous other things. It sounds like you may have to work with the legislature to get some of this done going to likely be a Republican-controlled legislature. Can you work with a Republican-controlled legislature if you are elected, also considering that some of those people think that you run, you ran, and they have no proof of this, a bogus election in 2020? Well, we ran all of our elections with a Republican-controlled board of supervisors here in Maricopa mm -hmm. County. As you recall, it was a four-to-one Republican board, and we got vote centers through because we brought data to those individuals, a lot of business guys on that board, and I think there's a lot of Republicans out there who want uh, the most efficient bang for their buck when it comes to government operations, which include elections. Mm -hmm. Vote centers are a part of that. And the ballot tracking system that we created in Maricopa County actually doesn't require any legislative um, uh, operations. We didn't need the legislature to share information that voters can already get. We just made it easier for voters to get that mm -hmm. information, and that's the system where folks get a text or an email when their ballot's coming to them in the mail and when it returns to them it's very popular among voters and i think we should do it statewide shouldn't be that tough there is some technical stuff we got to do uh, but it's going to be a much more efficient way to get voters the information that they need which is basically a receipt when they get their ballot to election departments across arizona not really tough, uh, and we've got the infrastructure already set up. I think that can happen quickly. And that was one of the strongest arguments you made in the primary uh, race against your opponent, Reginald Bolding, was that you have experience running elections. Um, however, just to turn, turn it around, like one of his biggest criticisms with you, again, was that you don't have much legislative experience. Again, some of the stuff you're going to be having to ask the state for, because you're also talking about getting money to underfunded counties. Sure. And that's a big ask to go down to the legislature and ask for money. i just ask you again, I mean, you know, you you did run. You were the Maricopa County Recorder in 2020, and again, some of these folks that will be down there, um, you know, how are you going to work with them, especially if they think you didn't run an up and up election? And again, well, there's no proof. Well, and, and we, all the audits have shown sure. that the, the election was 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 fair and accurate. And it was. And However, and it stands as the most highly scrutinized yes. election in American history, and Maricopa County still came out great. We ran a great election, and the proof is in the pudding. But the proof is also in the pudding in my capacity to work across the aisle with folks who are going to be reasonable and level-headed, look at the data, look at the things we are proposing, like, for example, uh, vote centers. Yavapai County has been doing vote centers since 2012, right? That's well before I became the Maricopa County Recorder. We already have the capacity in law to do many of these things. We do need some technological backup in a lot of our rural counties. We will need a little bit more funding. But at the end of the day, I even talked with Sheriff Summers in Greenlee County uh, in the primary uh, on the trail. Uh, folks need some change out there, and, and I think this is a bipartisan issue about just doing the job. Yeah, and some part of the job is getting those results. I mean, and what sure. is, do you have a strategy attack um, that you're, you think you might want to take a legislative attack to kind of work with some of these lawmakers? Because you're, you're going to need votes down there to get any of this stuff passed. Well, we're going to need votes to get the money that the rural yeah. counties need. This isn't yeah. money that's going to come to the Secretary of State's office. It's yeah. going to go to the rural counties. I think we've got a lot of folks out there in election director positions, mm -hmm. boards of supervisors, county recorders across Arizona who recognize the needs. My job will basically be to compile that information, bring the data directly to the legislature, uh, and they're going to have to decide. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about um, your opponent. You now face the Republican nominee, Mark Fincham. He is, in, you know, he has uh, been a lawmaker for a number of years down there, and he is one of the leading voices in the Stop the Steal movement. Um, he was at the January 6th Capitol riot. He was outside. There's no evidence he ever went inside with that. Um, you know, how do you see this election playing out? Obviously, he sees the 2020 election very differently from what you do. Um, how, how do you campaign against that? Well, this campaign is not about 2020. It's mm -hmm. about the fact that Mark Fincham wants to take away your ability to vote by mail. Mark Fincham wants to take away your ability to vote, for example, in vote centers anywhere in your county, if that's available in your county. He wants to take away your ability uh, to really express yourself the way that our systems are designed, narrowing Americans' capacity to vote, narrowing the number and type of Americans who can vote, and that's antithetical to the continuous process of expanding the franchise for Americans. We want folks in these offices who are going to have 
predictable, sort of understandable and reliable processes moving forward so that we don't have chaos, so that we don't have uncertainty, which is what he presents. Uh, the business community doesn't need that. The legal community doesn't need it. The medical community, the education community, they want some stability and predictability in these offices. He doesn't present that. I do. And do you plan on sitting down and debating uh, Mr. Fincham here in the fall? And I ask you that, too, because you guys can't even agree on certain facts. Uh, what good would a debate do? Well, I think a debate will highlight the difference between someone who knows absolutely nothing and bases everything on conspiracy theories and me. Uh, and I would absolutely love to have a debate. In fact, Dennis, if you want to host one, I'll be happy to do it. Uh, all you got to do is get him to agree. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll ask him again that Mr. Fincham is welcome on this program uh, anytime he wants to come on to to balance uh, this out. Now, I do want to ask you too, and get down into a couple of other things here. I want to ask you about the litmus test for, for Planned Parenthood. Obviously, they were going to be withholding endorsements from people who take uh, money from uh, from uh, political PACs affiliated with law enforcement groups. Um, you did not get the plan. Parenthood endorsement in the primary. Are you still hoping to get that endorsement in the general? I notice you haven't taken any money uh, from political PACs, uh, from, uh, from law enforcement. Um, so, A, what do you think about this litmus test coming from Planned Parenthood, and are you going to try to get their endorsement, or would you take money from uh, well, police PACs? Let's just be really clear. My history and track record on choice is clear. I was on the board of the Planned Parenthood Advocates of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I believe, just like Barry Goldwater did, that women should be trusted to make their own choices, their own medical choices with their own body. Uh, political entities have differences in the way that they do things, uh, and we make those assessments case by case, whether it's a labor union, a business group, uh, or law enforcement. So uh, we will see how things develop, uh, but I will be very, very clear that uh, I do believe in a woman's right, in a woman's mm -hmm. right to choose, uh, and uh, I do think that it is an absolute disgrace that Mark Fincham was backing January 6th, where law enforcement officers were killed. I think that's disgraceful, uh, and I think he has to answer for that as well. Okay, and, but again, um, any plans, if, if, a, if a police pack came up to the campaign and said, Mr. Fontes, we'd like to donate to that, would you accept that money? I'd be honored to have folks who put their lives on the line for the safety and security of our citizens. Uh, if they decided to back me up, I would take that. Okay, and fi final question um, here for the segment, never have enough time. Would, if you were to be elected, what would be the number one issue, you know, in this amb ambitious plan that you have to get done? I think the number one issue is to make sure that we're dealing with facts and that we have predictability in government. And what that really means is all the decisions we'll make will be data uh, centric. Uh, and I will invite anyone who is still of this stop the steal um, mindset to come down to county election offices around Arizona and actually learn about how the operations work before they try to dictate through legislation some kind of wackiness based on conspiracy theories. All right, at the end of there, thank you very much. It's Adrian Fontes, the Democratic nominee for Secretary of State, and still ahead, a program that's